What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're all having a great day. Today we're gonna play an Aria Poker Tournament. It's a 10K buy-in, one day event against some of the best players in Vegas. And I wanted to battle against some of the best to kind of test my skills. But before we get into that, spoiler, I do run a little bit deep in this thing. I have a new merch drop that I'm super excited to announce. It's been in the working for months now and it's on my own site, my own apparel and it's just my own clothing line, essentially. And uh, if you've been following me on Instagram, you've been following me on Twitter and stuff, I've been golfing a lot. And why not do something golf related? We got these Bink Polo Tees, Bink hats. I fucking love this. This is my favorite hat by far. Bunch of other stuff as well. We got a Bink hat with the teal on black, then a new Rampage Poker hat with the cursive. Uh, with new hoodie designs, a bunch of stuff on the site, rampagepokerstore.com. It would mean a whole lot if you wanted to support the channel in some way or another. The merch drop is live right now on the day that I posted this video. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna be wearing this all the time whenever I golf. And if you like any designs, feel free to check it out. On top of that, I made a whole new Instagram, Rampage Poker Store. So if you want the first updates on merch drops, meetup games, giveaways, a bunch of stuff. I'll be posting all of that stuff, more community-driven posts there on the Rampage Poker Store Instagram. So a bunch of new things happening, new merch line, much appreciated if you want to check it out, new Instagram if you want to check it out as well. This is by far my favorite hat. I'm literally going to have like seven of these and wear them uh, basically all the time now. So <laughs> love the teal, it's my favorite color. I love the designs, hopefully you guys like it too. And let's get into the Aria tournament where, a uh, fun fact, I actually had 1.5 big blinds before this whole spin up happened. So I didn't have many chips, but let's get into the hands. Let's hop into this Aria $10,000 one day tournament where we just got a fat double up of 157 chips. Just picked up pocket nines, went all in versus ace queen and doubled and all of a sudden, this is when the recording and video starts. I have over 300,000 chips from 135,000 starting right off the bat, and let's get into battling. We're here at end of level nine, at the end of late registration. There are 25 players left and $156,000 for first place. Let's battle with pocket sevens in the cutoff. I raise things up to 13,000. Both the small blend and big blend make the call. So we're gonna go three ways to a flop of queen, seven, four, two clubs. Amazing to see with middle set here and action checks to me. You know damn well I'm putting chips in the middle and I decided to bet 14,000. Something to make a note of here, the small blind player is short stacked and when he makes the call, the big blind makes the call as well. Got to be a little bit suspicious going three ways to a turn, hoping to not see a club now. The turn is the king of clubs. That is not what I asked for. Action checks to me, I can certainly go either way with a set, can bet, can check. I decided to check this one. It seemed very likely when we're multi-way to a turn here. Someone has a flush draw. I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious. River comes the king of diamonds. Got to love that now filling up out of all the cards I wanted to see. Definitely wanted to see a board pair. Action checks to me again. And now I think it's a very clear spot to go for value, but unfortunately, I don't know how much value I can get considering both players checked twice on the river, showing some signs of weakness. Seems like they don't have a flush, even though I really want them to have one now. So I'm not gonna get too greedy. I decided to go half pot. I bet 42,000 chips, small blind snap calls. Uh, big blind ends up folding and, you know, facing a call, of course. I win with my full house. Nice to continue building my chip stack. Over 400,000 chips now. Progressing to level 10, we play a big one against Sam Sovereign, a solid pro here. I have ace 10 offsuit on the button and raise things up to 18,000. Small blind, Sam, three bets to 60,000. Big one ends up folding and here onto me, I think my hand can go either way with a call, which seems pretty easy to play, or I could bump up the aggression. And against someone like Sam, who can certainly get out of line, can certainly be very aggressive, I wanted to uh, take the initiative myself and bump it up, put in another raise to 140,000. I think this hand has pretty good properties with an ace and not very playable with an offsuit 10. And luckily, my opponent ends up folding. So nice little pickup of chips. Wanted to show this as a little highlight using this hand as a four bet bluff. And we are continuing on. Level 11, there are 19 players. And level 12, there are 16 players. And moving on 
Not many hands develop as we're playing quick 30 minute levels, but when I were level 13, 14 players are left at the final two tables and we pick up ace eight offsuit in the cutoff. Good enough hand to raise, I think, here, so I bump it up to 30,000, and we get the big blind to make the call. Flop comes king eight deuce rainbow, and action checks over to me. I think this is a board in hand that I certainly could bet myself, but considering how many people are left in the field and how close you are to the money, I decided to check this one back and be more, a little bit more cautious. Turn is the seven of clubs, brings in a backdoor flush draw, and now, my opponent fires out 80,000 chips into the middle, a very, very almost pot-sized bet. Uh, certainly not going to be folding here. Of course, when I check on this flop and see a good-looking turn like this, I'm never going to fold my pair. I'm ahead of draws. I'm ahead of value sometimes with an eight. I'm going to decide to call. River is the deuce of clubs now. So it's great that the board is paired as I beat hands like 8-7, but it's not so good that I lose the flushes. My opponent sizes to 100,000. I think for this size, considering how big the pot is, certainly can't be folding a hand as strong as this. He could also just be doing this with random eights as well that I beat. So I make the call and sad news, my opponent shows king seven. Top pair turned into two pair on the turn and had me the entire way. Gonna lose this one, but moving on to level 14, about 400,000 chips. There's 10 players left and we see an all in. Three players need a bust to make the money, and we have King 10 versus King 7. Rooting for King 7, and it somehow finds the suck out and wins. All of a sudden, nine players are left in this tournament. Two players need a bust to make the money, and we are still playing at the final two tables as the final table combines at eight players left. With two players left to make the money, playing four-handed at my specific table, this is going to be tough as I have tens in the cutoff. A raising's up to 40,000. The small blind, three bets to 135,000. And I'm looking at my stack. I've got 460,000 chips in there. I only have 23 big blinds with a premium playing four handed. Also, against an opponent that certainly could be applying a lot of pressure against me as a shorter stack. So, there's only one thing to do I'm all in. My opponent doesn't look too happy, but does make a side call with pocket nines. Need to hold in this massive spot. I'm an 80% chance to double up and have a very large stack going into the bubble. And let's go to a run out. And we hold. Let's freaking go. At the same time that this hand happened, another person actually busted on the other table. So all of a sudden, I have over 900,000 chips in my stack. They were at the final table with eight players left and we're on the stone bubble. Next person to bust bursts the money. It doesn't take too long before fighting an all-in. We see ace nine versus pocket nines and pocket nines this time ends up winning and we're loving it because he had the bigger stack. We're now in the money with seven players left to go and we're picking up some steam at this final table table here, picking up queens on the button, a raising up to 50,000, and the big blind player makes the call with a covering stack. So we're going to a flop of jack, four, five, two hearts, and my opponent checks it over to me here with my overpair. I'm going to bet a little bit larger here to 100,000. I think I can get a lot of value from draws, worse hands, pairs, and my opponent makes the call. The turn comes the seven of spades, which is a very dicey card considering the positions and what we're playing against. Very connected card on this board here, but my opponent decides to not lead and check. It's a very good sign for me, thinking that I might have the best hand as all of his strongest hands, whether they are two pairs or straights, would certainly lead on this card. So I decided to bet up on the larger side to 275,000. This is going to size for an easy all in if we somehow see a river brick, but my opponent goes into the tank, almost uses a time bank chip, and then calls. All right. Need a brick, please. River is the three of spades with so many chips in the middle. I see one of the most disastrous cards in the deck. The backdoor spades gets there. Any six is a straight. So many two pair combinations get there. Uh, my opponent goes into the tank now, first to act, and decides to check. I am not betting pocket queens here ever in my life. Snap check this one back, and my opponent shows jack deuce of diamonds. Let's 
freaking go. Very nice to win this hand. Nice to fade the outs, but it was a very scary run out. And we're chipping up to 1.2 million chips in the money at the final table of this $10,000 tournament. The next hand, we've seen all in big hands colliding. Ace, king versus pocket queens. Queens is the bigger stack, but ace, king ends up winning this flip here. And now ace, king wins, finds a big double up, and the pocket queens player is left with a very short stack. Now, lots of ICM pressure on everyone at the table waiting for this guy to bust to make a pay jump. Moving on to the next hand, picking up king-queen offsuit in early position. I'm one of the bigger stacks at the table, probably chip leading, I think, and I've raised things up to 50,000. We get the button to make the call who has a similar size stack as mine, so going to be very cautious here considering there's a very short stack at play. Heads up to a flop, which comes king-10, deuce, two clubs. Here, I could certainly bet or check. It actually opted to bet this one. I have such a strong hand, it can get lots of value from worse. It also needs some protection from an ace and other other random cards that might not be good for me. So I bet out 45,000 here, and my opponent actually comes along for a call. Turn is, well, not so great. It's the eight of clubs. I am feeling a little bit mixed and pulled in two different directions here. In one sense, I have the queen of clubs to fall back on. So not a bad card, but on the second sense, my opponent certainly could have more flushes than me. So considering that there's a short stack, considering that winning chips isn't very important right now at this specific stage of the tournament, I actually decided to check this one, not go super greedy and bet, because if I bet and get raised, then that feels like a disaster. Luckily, my opponent ends up checking this one back, so now I'm very confident that my hand's ahead. He's never going to be checking back hands that are better than mine. So we're going to a river, which comes a board pairing deuce. It's a complete brick. Don't think my opponent's gonna have trips here ever. So I'm gonna go for some value now, knowing full reign that I have the best hand at this stage. I bet 90,000 chips, a little bit small, a little bit milky, but trying to get called by a worse king or sometimes even a 10 at that. And my opponent goes in the tank and ends up calling, which is great. Show the king queen and it's going to win this one chipping up before this next hand where i have nine seven of diamonds in the small blind the big blind player is short from the pocket queen's hand he's literally sitting with about four big blinds so i have a pretty easy decision i am all in i put my opponent at risk for his tournament life and he snap calls with king four of clubs classic classic flip king four versus nine seven how else can you draw it up and i hit a nine which is awesome and it wins, it holds. Just like that, I have 1.5 million chips. I'm chip leading this tournament with six players left in one of the toughest tournaments that is going on right now here in Las Vegas. Let's spin. Holy shit, update, I'm chip leading this with six left. Update, I'm chip leading the bracelet with 17 left. I don't know what to do, that's the update. Um, just gonna stay focused, you know? <laughs> two very big tournaments going on at the same time and I'm doing really well in both. I'm gonna try to just stay focused. I'm on a break. Not really a break because I'm playing this. Uh, just just to let you guys know, there's 16 players left. There's uh, almost 400k for first place. I'm freaking chip leading. I have so many chips right now. Uh, that's the update. Hopefully you see a vlog from this. Uh, if, I, if I make the, the, the final table, there's gonna be a final table in person for this specific bracelet event. Let's run it up in this Aria tournament though. Uh, six left, 156K for first. Progressing to level 17, I pick up ace nine offsuit in the small blind and there's a button raised to 80,000. I take my time and think about my options here with ace nine. I thought that maybe ace nine could be good enough to three bets or maybe get it in. My opponent has about 14 big blinds left in the stack. So uh, seemed like a decent idea to just put a lot of pressure on this button player who could be raising a somewhat wide range. So I make it 280,000. What is not fun is that my opponent then shoves his stack for 570,000 total. It's only 300,000 chips more after I put in 280,000 chips. I'm agonizing over this decision actually because I'm a little bit confused of what I want to do. At some frequency, right, I think I could just fold this because I'm dominated a lot of the time. Uh, secondly, I could also call this because I still have 
life and a chance potentially. You know, if my opponent has ace king, then you know I have a nine as an out. If my opponent has pocket eights, then we're purely flipping. So I already put half of my opponent's stack in the middle. I think I'm just gonna gamble for the other rest of the half and make the call, which I immediately don't like seeing because my opponent shows pocket tens and I hate it even more when my opponent flops quads. Oh my goodness. And just like that, um, there goes my chip lead. Chip leading for half a second before punting it off with ace nine off suits. Probably a little unnecessary, but here we are down to 700,000. All right, we've got a rebound and no better hand to do it with than king queen off suit, right? We're in the small blind and there's a hijack all in. This is actually Bryn Kenny. He's all in for 350,000 chips, which is just south of nine big blinds. He's the shortest stack at the table by far. And I think my hand is actually close between a call and a fold. Lots of pressure on me as now I'm a middling stack. Um, I think king jack off suit easily folds. Ace king, of course, easily calls. And king queen right in the middle. What do I want to do? Well, I'm not talking about this because I folded. That's for damn sure. I called although I don't really love it. Big one ends up getting out of the way and my opponent has ace three of diamonds. So this is a very fair fight, hoping that King High can spike it here. We see the run out. And the river crushes my soul after flopping my opponent pretty close to being dead. Oh man, I pay my opponent 350,000, my stack. Uh, is taking a hit. Um, luckily, I won a, a hand or two before that, so I made up some of the chips, but still well under 700,000 chips now at this point. Six players left. Um, yeah, under 20 bigs is not very comfortable at any stage of a tournament, and especially not so at a final table. This was a very, very unfortunate hand to lose. Progressing to level 18, we see an all-in. Pocket eights versus pocket tens. Rooting so hard for pocket tens to win this one as he's the covering stag, but eights finds the sun run turn and stays alive. Oh my goodness, we are still six handed. We're so close to getting another pay jump in this tournament, but alas, the 20% got there. But the very next deal, we see another all in. We see ace 10 versus ace seven. This time, the person we're rooting for is behind. We're rooting for ace seven somehow to win. And well, the short stacks are going to keep on living because ace 10 doubles up, still six handed before finally another third all in going on at this table. It's a blind versus blind situation. We see king eight versus ace seven. Rooting for, once again, the worst hand in this spot, but we spike a king. Shout out to my opponent for finding that king. And finally, GG's to the opponent with a seven. We are five handed in this tournament, locked up another pay jump. And now it's my turn to be the shorter stack at the table. It's funny how these dynamics shift in turbo tournaments. You are chip leading one moment, lose a couple all ins. And now I'm the shorter stack on the brink of elimination. I pick up ace eight off suit in the big mind with 500,000 chips. I have only 10 big blinds in my stack and it's a cutoff raise to 100,000. There's nothing else for me to do here. I think the cutoff's gonna be raising quite wide. I think ace eight is going to be ahead of really a lot of hands. So could get a fold, could get a call, but I'm all in and my opponent ends up making the call with king 10 suited for my tournament life. Let's go off to the races. Less for any more. And I'm out. That is a GG's. My opponent had the absolute world and hit it. And just like that, we're out of the tournament in fifth place. Not a massive cash out. And we're going to go to the outro to see how I really felt. All right. That's all she wrote. Unfortunate. You know, you got to win all the all ins. I think the ace nine hands a little bit of a mistake outside of that. It is very important to win all the all ins. And I did not do that at the end of the day which sucks. Uh, so out for fifth, at least it was an FT. It's good for confidence boosting. It's been a really tough summer so far for me, honestly. So didn't make a whole lot. I was in for two bullets in this one of 10.5K out for 36.8. Um, and yeah, lots to learn from. Still a good experience and gotta get more lucky. <laughs>
you gotta get luckier to, to survive with this thing. So uh, the field's also very tough as well. Everyone's pretty solid. So um, that's it. Thanks so much for watching this video. I am trying my best to make it here. Uh, as an update, there's eight players left, second in chips, and these are the payouts. So this is, this matters a lot right now. Uh, onto this one. So uh, thanks so much for watching this one. Hopefully more deep runs to come, like what I'm doing right now in this tournament. But this was a lot of fun. Battled with a lot of good players and uh, happy to get fifth, I guess. It's, it's, a, it's a result. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.